Welcome to Ruby Thursday. I'm Melissa Wanish. This is Ruby Snack number 41, AWS CloudFront Part 2, Configure Rails App, plus troubleshooting fonts. In this episode, you'll learn how to configure Rails to use that CDN CloudFront that we created in Part 1. And also, I will share a tale of troubleshooting custom fonts. I tried a lot of things, they didn't work, and then I figured out a way to make them work. Not sure it's the best, but go ahead and watch. Hopefully you'll learn from what I tried. There's also links that might be helpful if you're hosting on Heroku. If you want to code along, you'll need a CloudFront distribution, and you can check out this Ruby snack to set up CloudFront. That's Ruby snack number 40. I do recommend going ahead and watching the entire video before putting it in, just so you see some things to look out for. First up, we're going to add a configuration to Rails to use that CDN. In our production environment, we're going to add a line, config.actioncontrollerassethost, and that can either be the distribution URL cloudfront.net, or if you're using a CDN that you created as a CNAME, then you can put just CDN and then your URL. For most of you, that will be the end of your journey and you'll be ready to go. Let me show you what happened to me. Opening up my text editor, I went to config, environments, production RB, and then I added in the line for my CDN. I needed ending parentheses, then I committed and pushed to production. We've pushed to production, I'm refreshing the page, and okay, the fonts are gone. All right, but let's check it out to make sure it's loading the other files, the CSS and the JavaScript. So I'll inspect the page and going back into the head, I see that yes, it's pulling from CloudFront for the CSS and the JavaScript. But if I go to console, I see that the fonts are being denied, cross origin request blocked. So I started on my troubleshooting journey. Here's a few things I tried by Googling how to make sure that your fonts show with the CDN on Rails. And Ruby Thursday is hosted on DigitalOcean, and I've set that up with Apache. So I looked first for how to make that work with Apache. I added just one line from the enablecores.org documentation. That didn't work. Then I went on to another blog post that seemed pretty good, and I added several lines for the header configuration and added always. That didn't work. But hey, all these things might work for you. So as you see, I'm opening up my config file. I added in the directory, header set, access, control, allow, origin, and I just did wildcard. I said, let's see if it works for anything. You wouldn't want to leave that in production. You'd want to set a URL. But let's just try it out. Then, of course, I have to reload Apache. Back in Firefox, I'm loading it up. And it didn't work. Okay, on to the next thing. I added those additional lines, and they also include always. But trying it again, as you see, it did not work. Then I went specifically to DigitalOcean, and I looked and I didn't have a .ht access file. Then I tried different syntax for telling the header to access control allow origin method for the header. You can see I added it here in my config, but reloading the page had the same result. The fonts are just not loading. Another place to look when you're troubleshooting is the network tab in your developer tools, and I'm gonna click on that font file and it has a couple different options. I'm going to click on raw headers, and that doesn't show right away. You do need to expand the view if you're on Firefox. And now you can see exactly what the headers have. So you can see nothing I've put into Apache is showing up in the headers. Then I decided to not use Apache at all and try out the font assets gem and I changed the config.publicfileserver enabled to true instead of false. And that really is what you would do if you were hosting on Heroku, but I thought I'd try it out. I also followed the next two links and added the rat cores gem, again recommended by Heroku, but the, none of this worked for me. I'll show you what I did just to show you. I did add that font assets gem, and then I added a configuration in my application.rb to wildcard anything for font assets. 
Then I needed to change config.publicfileserver enabled to true. I saved this and pushed it up and no change. I even edited my CloudFront settings to whitelist those headers that I put into Apache, but no change. Then I added the rack course configuration and the gem, and again, no change. I came to the conclusion that none of these methods were adding the necessary headers to the font files. They would add them to the CSS files, add them to the JavaScript files. If you've reduced the cache time interval, in CloudFront settings it's called maximum TTL, or create a new distribution, which I also tried. Here is my workaround. I created a bucket on S3. I uploaded my custom fonts. I made those files public. Then I created a course configuration to allow Ruby Thursday to access those files. I added a CloudFront distribution for that S3 bucket. I added whitelist for the headers. And then I edited the style sheet to have font URLs be the CDN URLs. I needed to reference some documentation from Amazon, so I'm listing that here if you want to check those out. Let me take you through the process. I've already made my bucket and I've already uploaded the files. Now I am making all of the files public in my S3 bucket. And now I'm going to add the course configuration. I'm actually editing a configuration because I did a little bit of testing with just wildcard. But now I'm going to go ahead and put it how it needs to be with rubythursday.com. I'm also going to go ahead and add in localhost as well so that I can see them on my local development machine when I'm doing some new things. So I'm going to add in localhost 3000. And that's how you can have a course configuration when you're testing on your local machine. And then save. Now I'm going to create another CloudFront distribution. This time I'm going to pick that bucket that I created. And when I first created the distribution, I didn't put in any custom settings. So I'll just create that for now. Then I went back in and I edited as I was troubleshooting again and added the whitelist for the S3 bucket. So here we are adding those that are just associated with a bucket. We added that and I went ahead and added get head options as well as options. And I'm saving that. And then I grabbed the address for the CloudFront CDN and edited my CSS to include it. I did a little bit of a test just with S3 to make sure it would work. And then I added the CloudFront distribution because that's the goal of this to make it all go through CloudFront. So I'm editing this and adding the direct URL to the CloudFront for these fonts. So I save this, I push to production, and then I refreshed and voila, it worked. My troubleshooting journey is over. That's it for this episode of Ruby Thursday. I hope you enjoyed my tale of troubleshooting and it'll help save you some time in the future. And one troubleshooting tactic is to write down everything you try. So that's what I did for this episode until I felt like the online resources just weren't cutting it. So I found a different solution. I definitely welcome any feedback if you've encountered such an issue with CloudFront or CDN and your fonts. Head on over to Ruby Thursday and use the contact link at the bottom to email me. And yes, go ahead and sign up for my mailing list. You get some extra special stuff in the emails every week. And if you are not already subscribed to my YouTube channel, click that big red button to go ahead and subscribe. And as always, feel free to comment below. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you soon.